Hello my friends, welcome back to another episode of Vlogmas. This is the sixth episode of Vlogmas. Last I was looking to see how many I did last year, because last year was the first day I vlogged every day in December, and I got 11 vlogs. I know I was definitely more diligent about putting them out pretty much exactly every other day, and I haven't done that this month. I don't know, we've still got... How many weeks, how many more days of Vlogmas is there? Let's look on the old calendar. So we have another week and a couple of days. So. Uh, yeah, I'll probably only have like two or three more of these. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, it's been fun. I am really glad that I decided to do the daily vlogs because I have really enjoyed it. It's really been fun to talk to you all more often. I feel like that's something that I remember now that I'm in it, that I remember really liking about doing Vlogmas last year was how it was just fun to chat with y'all every day and or nearly every day and have you in the comments. So yeah, okay. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the book that I'm reading. The audiobook that I am reading is, ugh, can't hold it. My American Duchess by Eloisa James. This is actually the book we picked for the Rake Appreciation Society live show, which is the historical romance book club I do with my dear sweet friend, Jen from the Book Refuge. Our live show is actually tomorrow night, so I'm gonna give you all of my thoughts on the book at, in this vlog because the live show will already have happened by the time this comes out. Cause I don't think this will go out until probably Friday at the earliest, but. Anyway, this was Jen's pick. She picked this one. She loves, loves, loves Eloisa James. And I have loved the books that I've read from her so far. And I'm really enjoying this one. The basic premise of this is our heroine is sort of like the back cover blurbs her as like she's a runaway bride and that she has had several, I think she's had two or three marriage pro offers and she's accepted the marriage proposal and everything. And then she ends up like, not going through with it. So she's kind of dubbed as like a runaway bride. She is an American heiress and she needs to, well, wants to marry as, you know, duh, historical romance, that's what they want to do. So she ends up finally agreeing to marry an English lord. I actually don't remember his title. So she's engaged again, and she's determined that this time she's gonna she's gonna go all the way to the altar. She's gonna marry him. Then one night she's at a ball, and she ends up sort of running into the Duke of Trent, and he is. I'm I'm only this far into it, so I'm like this is a large print book, but I'm only like not quite even a hundred pages into it. So she ends up meeting the Duke of Trent. They have this 
really fun interaction. Like probably their interaction engaged me so much in this book because I just, I love, love, love like a starchy duke who is completely set on marrying like a proper English woman and that's how the Duke of Trent is. Like he wants to marry a proper English lady. And lo and behold, this American, who obviously they don't look very highly on Americans over there because, you know, title is everything to them. This American shows up and she's everything that he thinks he doesn't want. Like she doesn't necessarily argue with him, but she is not afraid to like speak up and to sort of verbally spar with him. And it's just so delightful. And you can see how immediately taken with her he is right off the bat. And it's just so fun. It's one of the funnest, like, first meetings that I've read in a really long time. So I really loved that. And I have just gotten to the part where we have seen that the man that she's actually engaged to is the Duke of Trent's brother. So drama. I'm here for it. Really enjoying this. I just adore Eloisa James. I think that she has such a great way of writing dialogue specifically. I love, love, love her interactions between the characters. I think she really nails it. So it feels like a real conversation and it feels funny and interesting. Like you getting all of the feelings that that couple is having in that interaction and that conversation. It's just fantastic. So I'm very happy about this one. That is the audiobook that I'm listening to. And then I also, um, <laughs> Actually, let's do the tea tasting first. Let's do the tea tasting first. And then I will tell you about a little piece of book mail that I got that I don't even know what I was thinking when I bought this book. I mean, I do know what I was thinking, but I'm also like, why did you do that? <laughs> I'll explain in just a moment. So the teas that we have today, I'm actually really excited about both of these. Um, the David's tea is a really light color. I think I, I showed a little bit in the B-roll. It's super light. The tea looked really pretty in the tin, and the Adagio tea is really dark, which I think suits the tea that it is. So I'm excited about these. Okay, so the David's tea is Sleepy Lychee. I actually love lychee flavor. I love it so much. I think it's delicious. We, a few years ago for my birthday, the kids and my husband, they bought me a bunch of just like exotic fruits instead of like a birthday cake which was so fun and we all tried them and one of them was there were lychees in there and they were so good I'd never had them before so I'm excited about that flavor actually it smells really good and then the adagio flavor is black forest cake which smells a little chocolatey and I am very excited about that one too so let's taste the David's tea first it's in my guaranteed HEA Okay, that is good. I just don't love these flavors, man. Like, I felt like, like it smells so good. It smells a little bit exotic from the lychee. And I think like, so smelling it right before I tasted it, like I had my expectations set and I was like, oh, this is gonna be good, this is gonna be good. And then I taste it and you get like just a tiny hint of lychee. And then you get that classic, what I feel like has become, what I've associated with David's tea is just that classic overwhelming sweetness. And I just don't understand that. Like the flavor's not super complex. It's just kind of underwhelming and just overpoweringly sweet. And you know the interesting thing too, and maybe it's because all of these are herbal, but the David's tea has so much loose leaf tea that it barely fits in one of my little tea things and the adagio teas doesn't have that much in it so i'm like i mean i'm disappointed in this because i felt like this could be a good flavor also it snowed a heckin ton and i'm still freezing so at least this mug is warm and good but it's not good it's definitely not the worst one i've had from them but it's also disappointing because I felt like that could have been really good. Okay, on to the Adagio tea. This is a Black Forest cake. It smells so freaking good. It's just like a night and day experience between those two, honestly. Like this tea is, this is a, like you can taste a little tiny bit of chocolate, but it's just like a little tiny bit like earthy too. 
and it's just like it feels it feels it it feels like honestly this is gonna probably sound dumb but it feels like something that I could see being prepared for me by a, a very lonely cottage with um you know a magical being inside making me a cup of tea like yeah that's 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 what I imagine this could this could be this could be like a magic potion I don't know that's just what I'm thinking it's just really really good and complex. Yeah, I love it. Like, it has just, like, a little bit of... So, it's so interesting to me because I put the same amount of sweetener in these teas. I do, like, I sweeten them with stevia, but just, like, a teensy bit because stevia is really strong anyways, and I hate really sweet teas. Have I made that clear? I know I have. I say it every single time. So, I only put, like, a teeny tiny bit of stevia in there, and... I need to just leave it out of the David's tea. So there, the sweetness, I feel like, isn't really from the stevia. It's from just the tea itself. So it's it, this one has just like a hint of sweetness, but mostly it's like rich, complex hints of chocolate, earthy, just, ooh, it's very good. And then the lychee one, just like sugar water with just like a little, a little dab of lychee and flowers. It tastes very flowery. Okay. We're done with that. All right, so the piece of book mail that I got. I bought this book because I saw Malia. Oh no, phone call. No thank you, scam likely. Because I saw Malia talking about this. She was talking about this book. And she's like, this is the mysterious TikTok book. So this book is written by Anonymous. The author isn't on the cover. It's not even really talked about who the author is. And this book was not exactly cheap either. I mean, it's indie published. So it was, you know, in the like 15 or $16. But Malia was talking about how it, this was like kind of a buzz going around TikTok, it's this mysterious author, Anonymous, it's a, it's a book talker, but they are not telling you who they are, and they wrote this fantasy book, and I don't even honestly know what it's about, I just bought that because I'm like, okay, I'm curious, I'm curious, let's see what it is. Also, I do like the cover, honestly, I think the cover is pretty cool looking, but I bought it, and then I was like, why, why do I do that? I don't even think it has a romance in it, so like, why, you know? It says mortal elf halfling fay. Hmm. But there is a prince in there, so maybe there's a little bit of romance, but I know this has been also going to just fantasy book talkers. Like I think that the author of this is a book talker and so you know, they send out promotional packages and I know that they didn't just send them out to romance book talk. So I have this and let me tell you about one of the reviews. I just went and looked it up on Goodreads, which I should have probably done earlier. One of my Goodreads friends named Taylor said, gave this book two stars. And she said, the second star is my fear of book talk. So <laughs> essentially it's a one star book. And honestly, like I, I get that because TikTok can be a scary place. So there are a lot of negative reviews for this book, but there are also a fair amount of positive reviews. And usually the positive reviews are, there's a disclaimer saying I was sent this book. And I feel like that's pretty interesting. And um, yeah, it can be really hard. It can be very hard as a book reviewer when you are sent a book by an author, whether it's an e-arc or a physical arc, if they send you a book and you don't love the book, it can be really, feel really uncomfortable to talk about that, you know? And I think in general for me, if I am rating an arc, if I'm reviewing it, if I really don't like that book, I, and I have gotten an arc for it, I just won't review it. And that's only happened to me an, with an arc this year twice. I've, I've received two arcs this year. I started reading them and I felt like they were so bad that I DNF'd them and I didn't review them. And I just, I don't know, especially when it comes to indie authors, I just don't love 
leaving a negative review in the first little while of their book's release. And by negative, I mean like one star, right? So that's just me. But I will never, ever, 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 this is my promise to you, I will never rate an arc five stars, whether it's an arc that I requested an advanced reader copy, or if it's an arc that was just sent to me, I will never rate a, that five stars unless I completely and wholeheartedly loved it. Like, I'm more willing to give arcs four stars or three stars. Like, some of my three star arcs probably, if I was in a more pissy mood that day, could have been a two star. I'm thinking of really only two books like that. But if I give an arc five stars, it's because I really, really loved that book. And it doesn't matter who the author is. It doesn't matter if they sent it to me or I asked for it. So it's interesting for me to see big disparities in books, especially a book like this that you just like don't really know anything. You don't know the author. And anyway, that's my little, that's, those are my thoughts on reading and reviewing arcs. I will sometimes hold a review back if it's a two or three star and I'll wait to talk about it until the book has been out for a little while. But in general, if I know it's a book that like either the author's writing style isn't working for me, something with the story is really off or there's something in there that's just really pissing me off that I know it's gonna be a one star, I just DNF it and I don't leave a review. And then I talk to you about them here. I just was getting together the notes for my most disappointing reads of the year video. I didn't do one last year because I was like nervous about talking about books that I didn't like. Because it can be scary. Some books that I don't love have very huge fan bases. But this year I'm going to do it. Because I think it's one, it's cathartic to talk about books that you didn't like and why you didn't like them. And two, I think that it really helps people who follow your reviews and your recommendations know like what works for you and what doesn't. I feel like you get a little bit of a picture of that when you know the books that I love, but you get a fuller picture of that when you see the books that I don't love, you know? So anyway, I'm doing that video this year and I'm actually really excited about it because who doesn't like to vent about books that upset them, right? Anyway, once again, here we have a very long clip. Thank you for watching. I'm going to continue on with My American Duchess and then check back in later. friends and welcome back. Today is December 17th. I missed a day of vlogging. I didn't vlog at all yesterday so I have four teas to taste for you. So we're gonna do today's tea first, December 17th, and then we will, I will make the other uh, yesterday's and then we will taste those too and then we'll call it a wrap on this vlog. It's that time of year right before Christmas when it's like you realize that you're running out of time and you have to get everything done. You know? So, 
I have today, the Adagio Tea is Ruibos Nutcracker. I'm really excited about that. I just was on their site the other day. I placed an order for some of my favorite teas and I saw that on there and I was tempted, but I didn't buy that one. So I'm cu really curious about that one. And then the David's tea is just peachy, which I actually love peach herbal tea. So I'm excited about that. The only problem is that I'm not sure. I think I put the David's tea in the mug Stacy gave me. Yeah, that's definitely peach. <laughs> so we're going to taste the peach tea first. That's pretty good. It's a little tart, surprisingly. I like this a lot. This, <laughs> once again, this tastes like a uh, candy, like a melted candy. I just went and got my hair cut. It's just, I only just get the ends trimmed, but look, it's always so nice to have your ends trimmed. And like when they blow it out for you, it's just like the best thing ever. So this is good. It's tart in the way that like a peach Jolly Rancher, that's what that reminds me of is a peach, like a Jolly Rancher type of candy. So I like it, but like Celestial Seasonings has a peach tea that is my favorite, which I think is better than that one. I don't know that I love the tart because to me, peach should be like mellow and sweet. I don't know. It's good. It's good. It's definitely one of the better David's teas that we've had. So now let's do the Adagio Rubos Nutcracker. So good. Also, all of the mugs that I do, except for the one that Stacy gave me, are from Hello Lovely Box. I have a discount code in the description. If you want to get a mug also, I really think their mugs are super cute. This is really good. This is like, it has like a really subtle nutty flavor and like the earthiness of the Rubos. That's really good. And now I'm sad that I didn't order that one because that's just freaking delightful, honestly. I really love that one. 10 out of 10 for that one. Okay, so those are the teas for today. Now let's do a book update because I didn't update you. Last night was the Rake Appreciation Society live show where we discussed My American Duchess. This is what I was talking about that I was reading in the previous clip. And it was a really fun live show. We didn't have too many criticisms about this book. This is one of Jen's favorite books. She gave it, um, I think she said that if she had read it for the first time now, it would be a six star read for her. I really liked this, but I gave it four stars like a high four star, maybe like four and a half. I loved the trope of like their twins and, but she didn't know that the hero Trent or what does she call him in the book? I can't remember now. She calls him like an American name. Is it Jacob? It's adorable. Once they end up like um, having a relationship, she starts calling him an American name, which I, of course, I can't remember what it is, but his name is Trent, the Duke of Trent. And when she stops calling him that, like, he gets all upset about it and wants her to call him her little American name that she thought for him. So this was really cute. I think my favorite part of this book was the buildup and the conflict and the tension of she is a lady who needs to marry and she's sort of abandoned three previous marriage proposals. And so she, she thinks to herself, I cannot have another engagement fall through. I cannot abandon another engagement. So she's convinced she's going to marry Cedric, but she meets the Duke of Trent, who is Cedric's twin brother, fraternal twin. So they don't look alike at a ball and they have like sparks are flying and so much chemistry. They're really getting along. Like the Duke of Trent is very intrigued with her because she's so different from all of the British ladies because she's an American and that just appeals to him so much. They had such great chemistry and I loved the conflict of he wanted his brother's fiance. Like that was just fantastic. But then the reason that I gave it four stars is that that tension was very quickly resolved halfway through. And then it just felt like, like there was this rising tension and it was, everything was so great. Like I was just compelled to read it. Like, how is this going to work out? I was really loving all of their interactions and it was so good. And then once they got together, it felt like we had this period for probably a third of the book at that point where it was just like, nothing was really happening. Nothing was driving the story forward. It was just them trying to figure out this marriage that they were in now. And he is convinced he is convinced that he can't love her, that he won't love her. 
And it was just a little, it got a little old. It was a little boring. It was just, I don't know, I just wasn't feeling it, which surprised me because I loved the first half of it so much. And I just felt like there was so much chemistry between them. I was feeling their relationship. And then when they actually get married and he was like, no, I can't love you. I'm never going to love you. And I was just like, what? Like, I don't know. It just kind of fell flat. Like, I understand why we talked about this in the live show, but it was, it really like killed my enjoyment of it so much that I was just sort of like thinking it was going to be a three star. And then the final conflict that propels them to be together was amazing. And I loved it. And I felt like it worked out perfectly. So that pushed it back up to a four star. So overall, I really enjoyed this. I think Eloisa James is a very clever writer. I think she has great wit, great humor, excellent banter. She has really unique plots and really fun situations. And of the two books that I've read from her, the first one that I read was When Beauty Tames the Beast or When Beauty Tempts the Beast. I can't remember which one of those it's called. I felt the same way. I just loved it so much. And she writes heroes who absolutely worship the heroine. And I just freaking love that so much. Even though they have like their dummy moments where they like don't want to admit that they love her, you know? But it's still, it's just, so this hero in here was really great. I really loved him. I also really liked Mary. I thought she was a fantastic heroine. Very spunky, very fun, a little bit naive, but not in a way that was off-putting, you know? Anyway, I enjoyed this a lot. Four stars. It was, it was a solid read with just a moment where I was like, what the heck happened? It just felt like a completely different book, you know? So liked it a lot. Four stars, four out of five stars for that one. So that's the only book that I've read in the last three days. I The book that I am reading right now is an audiobook. That my current audiobook is Lotus by Jennifer Hartman. This is a dark romance, and it is a very emotional romance. I was interested in this book because Pam Godwin talked about this author, and I think she specifically either mentioned this book in the author interview we did on Jen's channel, or she mentioned it on Instagram. So I bought it, and I've just had it sitting there waiting for me when I was really ready for like a darker romance, something that was going to be really emotional. And so then I, after I read Seven Days in June, I was just like, that's what I want. That's the type of feeling that I want. So I started this one. It's very interesting. It is beautifully written. And the interesting thing about this plot is that the hero and heroine were friends as children. And the hero, as a child, is abducted. And, you know, obviously that sort of breaks everyone. And they're trying to come to terms with the fact that he was abducted and he's gone. They assume that he's dead because they can't ever recover a body or recover him. 22 years later, he's found, actually, and he comes back into their life. And they're trying to adjust him to the life that he's living now because this is where I, th I think it gets really interesting. The hero was abducted and he was kept underground. And throughout all of that time, he was led to believe that like basically an atomic Holocaust had happened. And he was one of only a handful of people who were alive. He believed that he couldn't, you know, he was a child when he was kidnapped. So that doesn't seem far fetched for, to me. You know, he was very little, very young, but his kidnapper basically told him you're only you know we're the only people that are that exist you can't go above ground and all that other stuff so it's interesting because he is the type of hero who has a very limited view of what the world is actually like and so he's learning all the things about how the world is now 20 years later after he was abducted so i am only about 20 percent into the book right now but I'm really enjoying it. I think that it's very interesting and I am ready to be emotionally hurt by this book with, an, with a happily ever after. Obviously, like I want to feel the pain. I want to feel the emotional pain. I'm ready for it. So that's the book that I'm reading. That's what will be in the next update. And now I have some book mail. We're going to unbox it. I got some book mail, three packages. So this vlog is gonna be a little longer, even though we didn't talk about very many books. So this package came from Tori. And she said, Tori from A Novel Life, I'll have her link down below. She sent me this beautifully wrapped package. I'm excited, we're gonna open it. I have scissors here because, you know, ribbon is hard. Okay, so this is, from Tori. Oh, look at this. She sent me this beautiful historical romance. Look at that. Let's see. 
Wowzer, that's a stunning. Oh my gosh, that's Uncle Jesse. <laughs> this is the step back with Uncle Jesse from Full House. Oh my gosh, I freaking love it. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Tori. I am obsessed with that. I saw that on Instagram and I was like, that's one of the best step backs that I've ever seen in my life. Very thrilled to have that. Thank you so much, Tori. And let's see what is in here. Oh, this is a beautiful one. Kathy Maxwell, A Seduction at Christmas. Ah, uh, that's stunning. I'm obsessed with it. That's so beautiful. Look at that hand placement. Oh my gosh, I love it. This is a gorgeous painterly step back, which are my favorite. This is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much, Tori. I am so thrilled that these are gorgeous. I love them. Uh oh, there's the Amazon truck, so Kazi's probably gonna bark. <laughs> And then here's the card. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Tori. I love both of those and I'm thrilled to have them. Love you so much. Okay, so now I also got a package from Genevieve. I hope I'm saying that right. Genevieve is a darling person. I know her from Instagram. She asked if she could send me blind date with a book and I was like, absolutely you can. That sounds like a ton of fun. She also is an illustrator and she's done some really beautiful covers for the Wallflower series, which I freaking love so much. So let's see what she sent in here. Oh my gosh, look at this. She sent me chocolate and tea. Do you? Thank you so much. Those are like my favorite things. I love that. Obviously, I love tea and chocolate. And here is the book. Look at this, it's adorable. Build your own bookmark kit. That's freaking cute with butterflies. And there's a horsey in there. Oh, I love it. And look at this, she sent me this adorable bookmark that also has horses on it. Are those the Swedish, I don't remember what those are called, but those are so beautiful. Thank you so much. Oh, there he goes. He doing a bark. And let's see the book. Okay, this is Historical Highlander Medieval Time Period. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. A dummy thick Highlander woos a bonnie lass in hopes to expose her as a traitor. Obviously, everything goes as planned. Traditionally illustrated cover, published 1998, 384 pages. How freaking fun is this? I believe she still has these in her Etsy shop. I'll have her Instagram linked down below, so if you all wanna go check her out. You can do that. Let's see this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. Look at this. Look at that gorgeous cover. I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> he really is dummy thick. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Genevieve. I am thrilled. That is fantastic. I love everything that you sent. That was so thoughtful of you. Thank you a million. I love it. Okay, and now I have a package that my lovely friend Jessen sent me. I'm so excited. She wrapped this absolutely beautiful gift. Jessen, you're the best. Let's see if I can get it out. He's not dropping it. Look at how beautiful. That's so pretty. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Jessen, you really are a good gift wrapper. That's freaking beautiful. Did you, did you, did you tie this bow yourself, Jessen? I'm very impressed. I don't want to cut it. It's so pretty. How does it untie? I don't know. Am I going to have to cut it? Maybe. Jessen, this is beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm cutting it. That is the most pretty bow I've ever seen. Okay, let's see. Okay, the time is now arrived. Oh my goodness. Look at this beauty. Look at this card. Look at that wax seal. That's so beautiful. I don't even want to. I don't want to open it. It's so perfect. I'm going to very carefully open this cord. 
so we can preserve the beautiful wax seal. <laughs> Jessen <laughs> says this letter is best read in a Lizzie Bennett voice. It sets the mood since this is classy AF, if I do say so myself. <laughs> This is extremely classy. This is the literal definition of classy AF, Jessen. Jessen, you're the best friend ever. Oh my gosh. I'm about to cry. That was the sweetest letter, Jessen. You're amazing. What is this? This is exciting. Beautiful Lizzie Bennett and Mr. Darcy art. Oh, Jessen, I freaking love it. Oh my gosh. I am so lucky to have you as a friend. Also, there's chocolates in there, which chocolates are the best. Oh my gosh. I'm dying. <laughs> Jessen... You sent me the original covers of my favorite series that I read because of you. I'm talking to you, Jessen, right now. I'm gonna cry. Look it, look it. I have the original flow, grip, and still I'm dying. I can't, I cannot, I've been looking for these covers because I didn't find the series until they were reprinted with new covers. Jessen, I love and adore these with my whole heart and soul. I love my print. You are truly one of the best humans I have ever, ever had the pleasure to meet. I love you so dearly. Thank you so much for sending me those. I cannot even believe it. I am beyond thrilled. I love these so much. Thank you. I'm literally on the verge of tears. Like, thank you so much, Jessen. Well, we're going to end this vlog here. I will taste four cups of tea for you in tomorrow's vlog. So thank you so much for watching, my friends. Thank you for enjoying this Christmas unboxing with me. It was so fun. Thank you, Genevieve and Tori and Jessen, my dear, amazing Jessen. I love you a million. Thank you so much. And just so you know, I did read this in a Lizzie Bennett voice. Thanks for watching my friends, I'll see you in my next video.